So my name is Zhong Hu. I'm a research scientist at KAUST. Today I present to you our recent findings on temporary blocking for the first and second order acoustic wave equation used uh, wave from diamond multi-core parallelism. Something wrong? No, it's okay. It, it, it's, it's close. It's okay. No. Okay. So in this talk, we focus on MWTB applications in seismic modeling based on the first order and the second order acoustic wave equation and evaluate its benefits compared to classic SB approach on these new uh, multi-core architectures, including Intel Ice Lake, AMD, uh, Milan, Fujitsu A64FX, and Nix, uh, uh, A6 Aurora Vector Engine. ECRC at KAUS has a wide, uh, ECRC at KAUS has a wide scope of collaboration with multi-vendors to do research uh, with efficient uh, algorithms for analytics and simulations on emerging hardware. Here is a list of our collaborators and that contributes partially to the work that presented here, providing hardware and software assistance. Here is the outline of my talk. After a short introduction, I will give an overview of uh, multi -core, uh, multi waveform diamond tiling technique, uh, MWTB, and its application in seismic modeling. I will then uh, discuss the performance evaluation on various architectures. I will end my talk with some conclusions and future work. The 3D acoustic wave equation is widely used in its second order uh, formulation for seismic modeling, seismic imaging, and seismic inversion. In its second order formulation, the 3D acoustic wave equation is written the following. Uh, this equation can be written as the system of the first order uh, PDEs as the following. In this talk, we focus on the solve for such system uh, using the eighth order in space and second order in time, uh, the uh, where the velocity component are computed at half discretization points of the pressure feed, both in time and space. Uh, this work is based on the Geary framework, which is developed at KAUST. The classic implementation of uh, wave uh, equation-based seismic modeling would compute uh, such wave propagation one time step after another. That is to say, for each time step, uh, it accesses all grid points via three nested loops and perform computations. To enable parallelism on multi-core architectures, uh, one may include OpenMP uh, directives to parallelize these loops um, and take advantage of the cache. On such, uh, on these uh, on multi-core architectures, it's beneficial to implement uh, cache blocking to work around uh, memory bandwidth limitation and increase um, performance. Uh, the temporary blocking uh, is a performance optimization technique that aims to reduce memory bandwidth requirement of stencil computation by increasing its uh, cache reuses uh, among within successive time steps. Uh, MWTB refers to uh, multi-core waveform diamond tiling temporary blocking technique uh, is a new temporary blocking scheme for improving the performance of sensor computation by uh, um, on multi-core CPUs. For this, it uses um, different strategies uh, uh, in each dimension. For the innermost dimension, um, X, it, rely, uh, it relies on um, a compiler to do auto vectorization. For the dimension Y, it uses diamond tiling technique. For the outermost uh, dimension Z, um, it uses waveform parallelism. We will review these concepts in the next few slides. Besides the reduction of the memory bandwidth pressure, MWTB also allows overlapping computation and communication. The first temporary blocking uh, technique using is the diamond tiling. The figure here illustrates its basic idea of its appli application in a 1D grid. Uh, the horizontal axis Y is the 1D domain. The vertical axis is the uh, time step axis. Each diamond uh, tie has dependencies to the two ties below as indicated by the arrows. It, it divides the space-time uh, domain into diamonds. The benefit of the diamond tiling is evident. It lowers the synchronization requirement of iterative stencil kernels and allows a concurrent start. Uh, waveform temporary blocking is another technique we use. By ensuring the waveform tie fits into the cache memory, the update order in this technique uh, maximizes uh, the reuse of the most recent, recently visited grid cells. Uh, one, must no one must notice that if we want to enlarge the number of time steps inside a waveform tie, uh, we have to enlarge the corresponding size uh, in the diamond tie, tiling. Uh, this would also enlarge the cache size requirement uh, of a waveform step. Both sides of the uh, diamond tiling space and time are tuned automatically in order to ensure these constraints. Here's a figure here. Uh, it illustrates a 3D view of different uh, waveform step combined with a diamond tiling technique. Uh, each waveform diamond tiling step is computed using multi-threads running on multi-core sharing and cache level. As a result, uh, the memory bandwidth pressure can be reduced. 
Without going into much detail here, by ensuring the length of the waveform step to be a multiple of the number of threads sharing the work in the waveform direction, we can thus generate a well-balanced workload among all these threads. Uh, two levels of parallelism are used here. The upper one is for diamond scheduling, and the lower one is for computing this uh, one waveform step. The height of the diamond, the length of the waveform step are parameters that can be auto-tuned so that we can generate the most uh, performing configuration for dedicated hardware. The memory requirement of running the MWTB-based stencil computation is the same uh, as that for a spatial booking approach. Only two arrays are required uh, for saving the two previous time steps, for example, the t and the t minus one. After the computation of each time step, the array which holds the time step minus one will be updated to the time step t plus one. We alternate the use of these two arrays as input and output to compute all the time steps uh, of the stencil within the diamond. Uh, once the diamond is processed, uh, these two arrays only save the latest two time steps each, uh, of each stencil following the shape of the diamond. Uh, such MWTB implementation was previously designed for the second order wave equation, and we adapt its application to the first order formulation as well. In order to alternate the memory, uh, in order to alternate the memory usage between uh, uh, between each time step inside the diamond, we up the uh, well, uh, but instead of alternate the memory usage between each time step inside the diamond, we update the pressure uh, wave feed and the velocity wave feed alternately, as shown here. Uh, red refers to the update of the V, and the yellow refers to the update of the uh, of the P. Compare, uh, com compared to the implementation uh, using a second order formulation, more data is needed here, and to ensure the correctness, we need to double the total total time uh, uh, time iteration. For, for um, performance evaluation, we use uh, various processors from various vendors, including classic x86, like Intel Ice Lake, AMD Epic Milan, and also Fuji2 ACC4FX, uh, NIC uh, SX Aurora. Each of them are quite different. Um, besides the most widely used Intel chips, the AMD Epic Milan processor has a shared L3 cache among each core, uh, core chip die, noted as CCD, which is composed of eight cores. Uh, so we can so we can take into account of that as well. The Fuji2 acc 4 fx has a very limited last level cache, uh, L2, but a much wider uh, memory bandwidth. The Victor engine uh, NIC Exis Aurora is a more like a host accelerator with only a core uh, inside, but even uh, higher memory bandwidth. The build environments are shown on the right hand side. We start by showing the performance. Uh, uh, we start by showing the performance results of seismic modeling using second-order wave equation formulation on Intel Ice Lake processor. On the left, we show the strong uh, scaling performance curve for a given problem size, 724 times 724 times 512, with thousand time steps. The horizontal axis is the performance in terms of the uh, 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 gigas. Uh, the, the vertical axis is the performance uh, is the performance axis in terms of gigas tensile per second. For multi-thread performance on a node, MWTB beats SB in terms of the scalability. Uh, we set here 14 as a size of thread group that are used to compute one diamond together. As scheduling is by default using core from low index to higher index, uh, the performance of the MW shown here in this curve is uh, you know, on this part, on this uh, uh, 28, uh, 28 eight thread part, is actually lower than the SB. This is artificial, uh, since a more balanced uh, use of all cores among two sockets will increase its performance and achieve a much higher performance. On the right, we show the roofline model uh, for the stencil kernel using SB and MWB. As you can see, the performance of SB present here uh, uh, as a round circle is much lower uh, than that of a TB. Uh, what's more, the DRAM arithmetic intensity of TB is much higher. higher. This matches concept of TB design, which is to maximize the data reusage uh, among multiple time steps. For the performance results using the first order uh, wave equation formulation on Intel Ice Lake check, we use the same test grid and the trend remains the same. As we need to compute the various component of velocity we feed for the first order formulation, the implementation requires more data to read from and write to the, uh, the memory. Therefore, as the general bandwidth of chip remains the same, the overall performance uh, of chip uh, overall performance uh, is, slight, is slightly lower than uh, the second order formulation. But again, the MWTB beats SB. 
for the roofline model, we draw the performance of TB uh, kernel as a whole, and then we separate SV into uh, two phases. As you can see, the TB's implementation has much higher performance throughput and higher DRAM heuristic intensity, which is, again, fully expected. We evaluate the AMD Milan processor with the same performance metric. Here we present the performance results using the second order formulation. As explained previously, uh, due to the particularity of the chip, the last level cache are shared among uh, CCD. We use eight cores as the thread group size for computing diamonds. This improves the concurrency of the execution. The performance of the MWDB is remarkably higher than that of the SB. And the AMD Milan chip has over 256 megabyte uh, LLC, where uh, the MWDB implementation is large in favor. We achieve over 25 gigastensials per second on our test case. On the scaling curve, we see the spatial blocking, on the other hand, gets a plus two when we reach half of the available compute cores. For the roofline model of, of the kernel, we see the same behavior um, uh, as on Intel chip, where the DRAM ahimetic intensity is much higher for TB. The, the L3 ahimetic intensity from TB is slower than that from SB, which is much less important for overall performance uh, for AMD Milan chip, as the band of, uh, bandwidth of L3 is much higher than that of DRAM. We get similar conclusion uh, for the implementation of the first order formulation on AMD Milan chip. AMD TB achieves 40 uh, gigastensials uh, per second, while SB reaches only 10. TB delivers 40% more uh, than SB. The third chip uh, we evaluate is the NIC Asics Aurora Victor engine. For people that are not familiar with that, it's a high memory bandwidth accelerator with x86, x86 cores, uh, so it can launch your application directly. It supports uh, Fortran, C, C++, uh, uh, program, uh, open, open, uh, open MP programming model, automatic, automatic vectorization, so it's really easy to use. There's no need to bind the cores, as each uh, vector engine is considered a separate compute unit, and um, all uh, cores inside the VE are identical. To achieve its best performance, it is important to make your loop fully independent where uh, order of operation uh, must not matter, uh, gather scatter access pattern of a victory is not efficient, which may lead to potential bank conflicts, like it, GPU. Um, to fulfill the vector pipeline and to hide latencies, it is preferable to have large uh, loop counts, and if possible, loops of loops with uh, known iteration counts, so that multiple SIMD instructions um, then can be filled into the pipeline and to hide latencies. This is the case for essential computation for both uh, SB and TB. By having very large waveform in order to achieve such configuration, the last level cache is limited. After various tests, we decided to set a third group size equals to one and run with a very large waveform step. So uh, the performance of TB in such configuration falls back uh, to that of SB, uh, which, uh, uh, which is expected as no intra-course data sharing in such configuration. Besides, we also use a feature called a packet, packet stencil provided by NIC uh, that generates good pipeline SIMD instructions. Um, another thing is the NIC also provides SCA, uh, which is a library to accelerate uh, stencil codes. A study showed that it reached 24 giga stencil per second uh, for SB using second order formulation. Our investigation um, for other configuration like uh, including SB using first order, um, TB use both first and second order are still ongoing. The last one we are evaluate is the Fuji 2 A64FX. As the A64FX has four numeric domains called the common uh, memory group, denoted as CMG, we started with a single uh, single we started with the, we started with a single CMG performance with uh, our default code. As shown below, MWTB is uh, both faster than SB with the first and second order formulation. And wave equation. However, after tuning the data alignment uh, by padding the innermost dimension, and SB is actually slightly faster uh, than SB. Here we show the performance using the using the four MPI uh, running on a different 12 core CMGs. This was first very surprisingly a very first surprise discovery. It means that traditional spatial blocking is good enough to be used on ACC for FX. So with the help of our, uh, with the help of our Fujitsu partner, we made a deep dive to try to understand uh, such behavior. We use one CMG uh, with only six cores to, uh, to check the performance and its, cheap, and its on cheap resources use, usage with FAPP. 
a vendor provided a profiling tool. Uh, with the analyze, it is confirmed that MWTV is using lower memory throughput peak and lower L2 cache miss rate as it's designed to be. But MWTV implementation has a much higher uh, high, flo uh, high floating point uh, uh, memory busy wait rate. So compared to with uh, so compared with SB, uh, TB was slower. Although TB reduced memory access, uh, the, pot the potential bottleneck is the data transfer cost from the DRAM to the uh, to the L2 cache is much higher. Uh, this is aligned with roofline model analysis from the Intel and AMD uh, runs. Other side effect of the TB is uh, as such uh, as each core of AC-T4FX has limited number of register and the prefetching of the data is critical to achieve good performance. The compiler might be difficult to generate a good ex executable that fits all these constraints. So uh, here's my last slide. We talk about MWTB uh, based seismic uh, modeling. Uh, its throughput uh, superiority compared to SB is maintained for both first, second order uh, 3D acoustic wave equation on various vendor architectures. The SB method is well adapted for architectures that ha have smaller last level cache but very fast main memory bandwidth. The MWTB method is largely preferred for architectures that have larger last, uh, last level cache. It's following the hardware train. So our future work will be finish our investigation with the similar study with the full RTM and also to integrate our work into uh, the GIRI framework. So I think I'm done. I'm ready to pick your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I saw the performance for uh, dual socket systems. And I think it's known from the literature that OpenMP implementations of spatial blocking, of space blocking, do not scale well in more than one socket because the distance between the cores is further away. How do you explain that temporal blocking scales well on this? Um, for the spatial blocking, the, 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 the test, uh, the, the, the result is generated with the data um, uh, first touched on a virus socket. So it, it is all, it, but the data is, uh, the, the data is, um, is designed to be located as close as possible where it computed. Uh, for, the, for the TB, um, it's, it is, uh, it is uh, not that possible. And we use like uh, NUMA CTL to, to, to do, when we do the allocation, we try to uh, put it on all the memory bank, banks. And as the, uh, and the scheduling is dynamic, we, um, we, we grab data uh, from randomly on, on, this mem uh, on these different mem memory banks. Would it, would it not be possible to follow the same approach for the, same bl for the space blocking? Sorry? Would it not be possible to follow the same allocation and the dynamic uh, scheduling uh, uh, for space blocking? For space blocking, do the same, do the same thing. Uh, at its at less, uh, uh, the performance is, um, is, uh, is, is lower compared to what we do for the SB for the moment. The SB, uh, what do we, uh, I, I repeat again, the SB, what we do is, in fact, we, during allocation, during the first touch, we use the uh, three less, uh, three, uh, Next loop, uh, next loop of OpenMP, and then do a static scheduling to ensure that uh, each block will be fit to a uh, will be uh, initialized uh, in a uh, in a different core, in a dedicated core. So we, we ensure that during the uh, uh, afterward when we do the real computation with uh, sound iterations, each time it will run where it is initialized. So in that way, we minimize the the QPI transfer. Is that answer your question? Thank you, yes. Yeah. Any plans for uh, MPI plus OpenMP on um, uh, multi-wave front dynamic yeah. temporal blocking? The, in the GIRI framework, actually, the MPI implementation is already there. Um, uh, we do the MPI uh, uh, distribution on the diamond, diamond direction. So the diamond can be, uh, the diamond direction can be distributed. Um, uh, it can be, can be computed uh, by using different uh, ranks and the data, the data transfer following the shape of the diamond. Uh, oh. Yes. 
So Let, let's let's move on and maybe follow up after. Okay. Thank you. Good presentation. Yeah. Awesome visualization of these fairly complicated stencils, by the way. <laughs> That's.